Okay, so thank you everyone um, for joining today. My name is Ashish and I'm going to cover MB230 Microsoft Dynamics Customer Service Exam. Uh, what I'll cover everything and uh, what are the key benefits and a couple of new features, new solution Microsoft added into the certification. This certification was there in a couple of years, uh, but now when it comes to omni-channel power virtual agent and uh, customer insight, customer service insight, this kind of solution added in the certification, it ma makes uh, the certification more complex because now it's not only about understanding the case management module, but it's also about understanding the whole architecture of a customer service, how all the tools are related and how we can leverage those in the day-to-day -day basis, right? So just before we start the session, let's do a quick in uh, introduction. So Meshi Shrana, I'm a business solution, uh, Dynamics 365C solution architect. I'm also a business application MVP. Um, so you can see me around uh, doing a bunch of different things around the customer service and field service, because that's my focused area at this point of time. And I'm also certified in a lot of certification. I do uh, like keep uh, updating my certification when it comes to architect one, uh, MB 230, 210, and all these things. And now it more changed to PL. So yeah, I need to renew those, but yeah, I'm just keep updating on those. Uh, to get the more focused and get the right knowledge at the right point of time, right? So let's talk about the agenda today, what we're going to cover. We'll see the core case management. What are the core case management functionalities? Because if you see the uh, the whole um, basically exam outline criteria, what it'll cover, it covers your knowledge management case configuration. It's not about the technical exam, it's more about the understanding the process and how to configure it. So the system will not, like no one in the question will not see about the code or something like a technical exam. This is more of a functional exam. So that's why I'm going to cover this exam, like this session, more of a mix of a demo and it's uh, power, this PowerPoint, right? So after one certain number of topics, we'll see all the functionality in the system, how it looks like, how we can do certain point of thing, and then we'll jump to back to a presentation. So as I mentioned, you see, uh, if you go to the outline of this exam, it, it covers a lot of functionalities, but thing is this, when it comes to the core one, it's something actually, uh, let's say if I talk about knowledge management, right? So knowledge management, Microsoft put like bunch of different topics in the exam, but it's basically somewhat, these are related, right? So it's not very complex, but it, you just need to understand the core functionality. And I think you, you'll be good for, for, for the exam. So as I mentioned, you'll, I'm going to cover the case managed, case merge, case queue, the core functionalities like knowledge base, entitled, SLA, omni channel for customer service and customer service insights. It depends on the time and everything, and we'll see actually how things going. And I'm, I try to cover all the system, at least give you an overview. And yeah, and reach, feel free to reach out to me at any point in time. So understanding the customer service experience, it's not only about the say, case management, as I mentioned, it's about the self-service portals you have right now, correct? You have Power Virtual Agent, you have Omni Channel, the customer service app, that's a core application. You have your uh, SLA and entitlements, a knowledge base article, your case resolution steps, because it's not earlier, earlier time. You just need to click on a button and resolve a case. Now you can run a dialogue and a process behind the scene, right? Now it's more about the customer service insight, how you can get those insight from the case management and empower the bot and connect the omni channel. So it's not only, as I mentioned, it's not only a Dynamics 365 core case management now, it's a connected environment, a connected different solution, and how you can empower your customer service department at this point in time. And obviously, you know, uh, Office 365 and Power Apps are the core platform which is connected to your Dynamics 365. So any point of time for customer service, we can leverage those environments, uh, like those platforms, and uh, obviously you can, you can use at the same time, um, you can also use uh, Power BI to, to get uh, your more uh, insights. You can create it if it's not available on the customer service insights, or obviously you can use the customer service experience hub. Okay. So next is basically, I'm just going to cover very basic phone to case process, correct? So phone to case process, uh, let's say it's called phone to case process, but it's just a core business process flow in the system. So let's say you got a call uh, you integrate with any of the telephone integration or now Microsoft launched recently the customer service, uh, uh, Azure customer communication services. So you can you leverage those to send an SMS, telephone integration and different bunch of different things, right? So let's say you received a call, agent pick up a call. It basically understand, okay, this case should belong to this queue. It put in a queue and then it routed to the right, uh, right agent and agent pick up the call and they 
need to discuss the problem or concern with the customer. Once the case is created, you can do a model of automation, sending a ticket. Just whenever you are just learning the customer service module, put in front you as a customer, correct? So whenever, let's say you're calling, if I take an example, let's say you're calling to a telephony or your internet provider, right? So what the steps they are doing, correct? You, they ask you to put some number, IVR code and all these verifications. So that's the same process actually you can configure in the system. And to an, yeah, it depends on the complexity and the process you're looking for. Uh, and and th that's the same kind of process people, all the companies in the world follow. And that's basically something we call a standard flow process flow. And then you basically, once a case is created, customer service agent provide you some number, correct? And based on the conversation, you need to, like they will log in all the activities in the system and then they will search article, correct? It depends on the company's policy and all. So they will search, search an article if required, they will send a link or for you to resolve it, correct? Because that's a very cost effective way for a customer service department to provide a customer to resolve their, buy, their issue by their own, right? Rather you send someone in the field service, which is like more costly than expected. And then once agent, once you're okay, like customer is fine with the case resolution, customer get all the information, they simply go and close the case. So that's a very standard process. And after that, once the case is resolved, you'll get a, some kind of survey, correct? Either a phone call survey, SMS or email or something like that. So you send a survey which you can use in the customer service as customer voice, right? So that's a standard case process flow. We'll see the complex one, how it looks like. So before we go, uh, just understand that foundational case process. So there is a couple of things. When it comes to phone call, email, or a case, anything, there is something called record, record, record creation rule you can use. So you have a bunch of different cues. So let's say whenever email come to my info at ashishrana.com, correct? Create a case and assign to this queue. So you basically automate the process. So whenever you're receiving an email, it will create a case uh, on by, from, from the sender's email ID, it will first check whether the contact is present from that ID or not. If contact is not found, do you allow system to create a new contact? Yes, then system will create a contact first and, a, and then create a case related to the contact. So that's the automation you can do. Uh, same thing for routing rules. You can route the rules, uh, you can create routing rules. So based on that actually rules, uh, let's say if it's coming from customer, let's say you have it, 10 category of customer, correct? And based on the priority, you want to uh, put the case to the, let's say golden gold customer or platinum customer queue, correct? And then actually you will have separate SLA, separate entitlement, you can put it there. So based on that rule, you're routing the case or uh, you're channelizing those uh, customer queries to the, to the right department. And obviously you have business process flow, which is, uh, as I mentioned, the case case to phone to case process, correct? Which basically guided steps to steps uh, for an agent to complete the process and uh, keep keep adhere to the company's uh, SOP. Next is case resolution. So what is the case resolution? There's a couple of dialogues you can change now. Uh, let's say case resolution, now you can change because earlier when you close a case, there is a fixed box actually, like pop-up will come up and you, there is no way you can modify those things, correct? So at this point of time, you can actually change the dialogue, put your own field, custom fields, uh, something like that you can do and that's obviously possible. At the same time, you can put a case resolution activities, like before you close a case, make sure these activities are closed, then only you are allowing your agents to close a case, which is very similar to agent script, now recently introduced in Omni channel and, uh, and your uh, customer service workspace, okay? And then there's a couple of uh, status reason transition, which I'm going to show it to you. So there is a couple of status reasons are in the case. So the first is the active case, or active status, second is inactive, and third is uh, resolved. So what it mean by those? Active status, basically either a case is, uh, it's a problem type or in progress, correct? That's, that's two thing. When it comes to an active case, either a case is canceled or a case is merged. When it comes to resolved a case, it means uh, a case is basically resolved, like if case is closed, correct? That's a status, very similar to what we have in opportunity or, or won or lost, correct? So when it comes to active cases, uh, active statuses, we have in, in, in progress, which basically means case is going on, no issue, everything is perfect. And on hold status, now on hold, it means you are either waiting, like agent is waiting for a some kind of information, either from their side or from a customer side. 
So in the both the cases, when you own hold and case, uh, basically status, it means you can pass the SLA. So let's say your KPI is 100, like you have to resolve this issue by next hour, correct? But because of your KPI is going down, you and your customer is not exactly giving you 100% information, you can actually hold the case. So your KPI will not uh, be, uh, be, be degraded or give you wrong values, right? So obviously, as I mentioned, you can cancel a case and uh, problem resolve and in progress. So there's a couple of transition you can do. And based on that, each of the section, like each of the, each of the case uh, is reasons transition, you can do automation, like as I mentioned, SLA one, right? So next is entitlement and SLA. What does it mean by entitlements? Entitlement, consider you bought a laptop from a company, let's say Dell, okay? And Dell give you 100, oh sorry, not 100, and, and give you for one, one year as you're a new customer and you're a student, we are giving you 10 free cases as a platinum customer, right? So whenever you're calling to Dell, they will basically reduce one case from your entitlement. So that's the number of counts you can contact the company to fix that issue. It depends on the couple of configuration when the reduction will be happen, correct? So some companies say whenever a customer calls and we created a case, reduce one uh, number from the total number of uh, cases uh, created in the entitlement, correct? I'm going to show it to you in a couple of minutes from the volume, correct, or the quantity. Or second thing you can say, on not on case creation, but on case resolution, whenever I resolve a case for this customer, reduce one or volume by quantity, correct? Something like that you can do configuration. Similar thing with SLA. SLA actually you can uh, more of like service level agreement, which is a very standard term. Uh, how, like what's your KPI to resolve this customer issue, correct? Every every company, uh, even right now you log a ticket with Microsoft. If you open a ticket with, let's say severity A critical, then someone within an hour send an email to you and call you or at least ask you to do more information. If you, for a severity B, then someone will call you in four hours, four hours, correct? So those are KPI company would put based on the critical issue uh, logged by the customer. And you can set this KPI based on the partner type, like customer type is golden, platinum, those kinds of things. You can put a K uh, SLA KPIs. Now I'm gonna show you a quick demo on the core functionalities. So when, you uh, when it comes to customer service hub, we have the customer service hub, the core application. We have the customer service workspace, which is very similar experience what we have in Omni channel for customer service. Give you like a multiple, uh, multiple, uh, ex multiple channel experience. So basically, at one point of time, customer like your agent can work on a various cases, right? So this kind of environment you'll get. Um, and then at this point of time, I'm not sure. I, I'm 100% I'm sure, but uh, customer service workspace is not part of the exam. But I'm pretty sure soon Microsoft will put it this exam mandatory for this exam. Uh, we have Omni Channel Administration, which is like a admin admin app for Omni Channel setup. Okay, I'm going to give you more deep dive into what is Omni Channel, and when and then next we have the resource scheduling and a couple of uh, like customer service scheduling hub app actually. And apart from that, we have customer service insights and Power Virtual Agent. So that's the core syllabus for the customer service actually. So let's go to case. So when you log into customer service hub, you will see a standard list of a couple of activities and entities here. So these are the standard, I'm not gonna go through those. But then we have something called cases. So here you can see list of cases, which comes coming from IoT. This is more of a customer connected customer service one. You'll see all cases, different views actually. Uh, so you can filter down your data. You can obviously search from here. You can create more of a advanced filtering, uh, very similar to what we have in advanced fine. Let's open a case. So either you can click in a new button, so you will manually create a case as an agent, or system either create a case from an email or from a phone call. If you are integrated with phone call activity, then based on the phone call uh, come, incoming with the customer, like telephone integration, it will give you a window to create a case, correct? But at this point of time, I'm just opening an existing case and see what happened. Oops, not this one. Let me see, yeah, this one. Okay, so this is the one. I created a case. There's a couple of fields that is very mandatory and you should uh, make sure that you should understand these. Case title is mandatory field at this point of time. Uh, so that's something, it's a free text. You can type a title based on the customer requested to you. Case number is unique number for all the cases. So that's very important. Whenever you call to your internet provider, 
they are giving some number or mix of a number in alphabetic, correct? So that's something a unique number. Whenever customer next time calling to your company, they can use this reference number or case number or ticket number to understand which case they are talking about, right? And then you can something like a categorize it based on the subject. Like you can define those categories as a query, it's a service issue, or it's a delivery issue, something like that, right? You can choose a customer here. Customer can be account or contact. So that's why it's called customer feed, okay? So it, if it's company is calling, let's say company's representative calling, you can choose a cust account there or someone individual calling, you can choose the contact here. Then we have an origin. If it's a case is created from web means, if it's case is created from portal, it will pick a web. For email, email to case process, it will choose email, a phone call, Twitter, and IoT, different things, it will choose a different type of origin. So similar thing that we have in lead, you can uh, then basically based on that, you can create your own dashboard charts to get how what type of data and it's coming from which channel for me, right? So you can also specify a product here for which product customer is talking about, right? So you can department, like you can send this case to the right queue to the product team, right? So they can work on it. Uh, then there is an entitlement. So you can define those a couple of things and I'm going to show it to you. And you can put a description, which is free text and all. Same thing, we have the title um, timelines here to create more activity, like sending an email to them, which is knowledge based article, do, doing the phone call to the customer, incoming and outgoing, or a couple of other things. Conversation is more related to your um, to your omni channel, uh, and then we have the customer voice alert also. Once you, uh, but customer send, sending a survey after the case is closed, it will come and sit in the timeline, so you can run another couple of reports to get what type of feedback customer provided. You can see here a list of all your recent cases, what type of entitlement is here, and it's showing you remaining term is eight. So I'm going to show it to you a couple of minutes how it looks like. Then we have a knowledge base. Uh, so knowledge base is like a separate, uh, it's a topic I'm gonna discuss you in a couple of minutes. So based on the type of case title I put in, system will search a right knowledge base article for me, like expected and uh, based on the query. And then I can actually change this title. Okay, no, I'm looking for something delivery issue, correct? So it will give me a more informa specific information. So if I click, it will give me like a list of more articles. You can send this article uh, a by email if it's like external article. We'll discuss it more in a couple of minutes. And then we have a similar cases. Let's say for a item, many people actually, a like couple of people's contact uh, for the same issue. Then it's basically a same issue coming out of the same company. It You can merge those cases. I'm going to come, come to a point in a couple of minutes. So next is basically your, you can like, it, Take more information here. Um, additional information is escalated. What when we need to do a follow up with the customer? What's the SLA and other thing? SLA we put it. It's two type of SLA. One is enhanced and another is simple. So this other timeline is coming in, and we'll we'll show you in a couple of minutes. So let's say whenever you in this SLA um, uh, topic, I put a uh, measure. I put a uh, criteria. Whenever a case is created from web, and the status the priority is high put this SLA and the put, I'm putting a high priority SLA because the case priority is high, correct? And let's see how it looks like. So whenever I open this uh, now, because system pick SLA based on my criteria, it is giving you first response time KPI and resolve by time KPI. And right now both in, in progress because it's still uh, as agent, you have time to fix this issue. And by when it's failing, it's failing today, at uh, 12 o'clock because I'm at I'm an EST so I time zone so that's why it's showing me uh, by today noon and by evening four o'clock this KPI like resolved by KPI means if you are not able to resolve this case by 3:55 today the KPI will expire and give you like a big bump actually in your performance right same thing you can put a warning time and those on warning time you can send an email to agent uh, like a more of automation email try to resolve this issue by this time because your else your KPI will be uh, will be measured correct. So let's open a SLA first. Oops, give me a minute. Let me open it from here. So you can go to service management and there is a bunch of different uh, that uh, you can uh, changes you can do like understanding queue, entitlement, you're setting the routing rules and all these things you can do from here. So let's first go to the case uh, SLA and then we'll go to entitlements. So you can create a SLA, like one SLA, multiple SLA, depend on the criteria and all, you can uh, 
trigger those LS SLA to the customer. So let's say I create one SLA and one thing also, SLA is not only meant for case, you can create an SLA for a lead opportunity, different other entities, correct? You just need to enable the SLA entity, like it's SLA for that entity, and you can put a SLA for your sales team. It's not only for customer service only, correct? So you can put this for field service now, right? So this kind of SLAs you can create. And there's two things. First is that there's two type of measurement you can do. Whenever a customer or contacted you, okay, when you need to respond to the first customer, correct, to understand what is the issue. Like they call you to give some high level information, but your responsibility to call them back and understand it in more detail. That's the first response. Second is basically resolved by KPI. Like when your case is going to resolve, like once what happened, uh, once the case is resolved, right? So you can trigger. So let's open a SLA item. I don't know why it's not opening. Okay, it's opening. I'm a bit, bit fast, that's why. So here, it's, it's. I just put a topic here. I put a KPI, it's resolved by KPI. Do you want to allow a pause? Yes. So as I mentioned in my presentation, you can hold a SLA if, if uh, your KPI is not, uh, like your KPI expiring, and you think a customer is not your fault, it's the customer is not giving you 100% information, so you can pause your SLA. In order to do that, you need to make sure that this button is checked to yes, okay? As I mentioned, when the SLA will be applicable, case origin will be web and priority equal to high. And those are, and like both of them will be there, then put my SLA and that's a timer. What's the success criteria? When the SLA timer will show, yes, it's uh, done. It will basically show um, status, status of a case is equal to resolve. So whenever my case is resolved, it basically give you uh, a, a success criteria. And what's the warning time in the case for resolution time? So warning time will be four hours when the case is created and failure time will be six hours when the case is created. I have not put any action here, but you can click and create a more action. What happened once the case is resolved? You can send an email to the customer. Your resolved case is resolved within that KPI. You can send an email to each agent's manager that this case is resolved within that KPI, or this can be done both on failure or on, on success, correct? So you can create so those action in Power Automate. So that's a button, new button recently added. So when you click, it will move to the Power Automate and you can uh, take it from there to create your more automation thing. Okay, so I'm gonna close this. Uh, next is basically, I'm going to cover the entitlements. So that's another topic. It's a, it's a big, uh, sometime confusion. What is the mean by entitlements and a couple of things. So entitlement, as I mentioned, is also not only for KSAT management, it also can be used for field service now. Okay, earlier it's only for case, but it's now for field service. And you can choose an entity, which entity. It's a case or work order you wanna create it. What type of allocation type, like number of cases or number of work orders or something like a number or a, a, a revenue you can choose. Uh, you can decrease when you wanna decrease. As I mentioned, can we decrease on case creation or case resolution? What are the term, like total term and remaining term? The total term basically, how many cases you wanna give the, for, for this customer at this duration, right? Okay, so that's a duration you can set. That's something you can define also a email entitlement template from here. It basically, instead of you creating for, let's say you have a couple of templates for gold and platinum or for silver, correct? So this kind of customer, you can create a template. So whenever you are creating a new entitlement, you can use the templates and all the data except customer and a couple of other things will be blank and you don't have to repeat the whole process, okay, choosing those, filling those fields and SLA and different things, right? So that's will be done uh, through template. Do you want to specify a channel? Uh, like customer can call you on web or phone call. Let's say you give this uh, a 20 term actually for only for phone channel and for email, it will be like 30 term, correct? Something like that, you can define the channel, total term and remaining term it will give you if you define those criteria. You can also define who in this company can contact, correct? Uh, you can also define for which product you are talking about. Customer has hundreds of product, but you want this entire only for my top 10 product. If customer is calling for these, these top 10 product, then use this entitlement. Else, no, no entitlement required. Correct? So that's entitlement. You can set those entitlements default. Obviously, once you create, is in not an active state. So you have to do it manually in active state and then you can set this entitlement default to the customer. So whenever you are creating a case uh, for, for general, because I have not specified anything, 
it will pick up that entitlement or you manually allow to do that. OK. So I'm going back to my presentation. I have not to cover in very short time, so I'm just bit rushing it. Um, oh, as I mentioned, next is case merging. As I mentioned, actually, if uh, let's say you got a two cases coming from the same company or you get a two cases for same type of issue created by different contact in the same company, then both the cases actually uh, same customer on same account. In both the cases, you can merge those cases and make it one. What happened actually, it will basically, you have an option to choose one of the, like put what type of activity you want to cover. Like one will be secondary, one is the primary. So when you merge, you can select which one is the primary one. So secondary one will go inside the primary one. OK, so you can see uh, that another one, the secondary case will be uh, as, uh, as, uh, showing as the status as merge and the primary will be show as in progress, something like that. OK, so those are another option you can choose. This is very important. Actually, case merging is sometime. I'm pretty sure some of the people like Microsoft 100 percent ask one of the question related to merging and what are the criteria and what what the process actually. So it's more on the configuration side. So just need to understand uh, criteria and, and how it work. That's it. Let's understand the queue, okay? Queue can be, as I mentioned, you can, you have a customer su su support representative and they belongs to a certain department, correct? So they belong, they are belonging to a certain queue. And in the organization level, it's like a hierarchy, correct? So you have a customer so sitting on the top, then you have a routing rules, and based on the customer contact, you can channelize to a certain number of uh, queues, correct? It's a, a standard customer, gold or platinum customer. So that's something, it's a, it's a queue you can do. I'm gonna show it to you how it looks like. So let's see a queue management. So same thing, same app, you can use service management and you can go to queue and you will see a lot of queue here. Like all in every contact, like every user in the system or some of the system for automation users, system will create a queue that's called private queue, okay? So we'll focus on a queue which I created as default queue and yeah, you can create a queue. It's 100% allowed. It's obviously system admin. So I created a queue as default queue here. And uh, and the queue can be a two type. It can be a public or private. Private means only people belongs to that queue can be access to this information. Public, basically people without even access, they can access more information. Uh, Private queue is more with basically belongs to a user. So if I'm as a user, system will automatically create a, my queue with my name as a private queue because that I can keep my data there, correct? When I'm working on a cases, correct? But obviously, if, if, if it's a public queue, I'm allowed to pick a case and uh, you can set a member and other thing. If it's, let's say, private queue, then you will see list of members. Only people who belongs to this queue can access this information. They can access those cases or, or uh, it can be a lead, correct? So public, basically, you don't have members here. You don't have a membership. Anyone can um, and can access that data from the public queue. You can set incoming uh, incoming email ID. If it's if this email ID is info at ashishrana.com, let's say, whenever someone's sending an email here, then for all emails, you can choose, okay, let's say only email which contains data in deeds, account, or uh, contacts then create an email, uh, create a case actually. So here I'm def def defining automation case creation rule. So when I click on here, it's saving. So whenever I'm creating, uh, it's it's um, you can define a criteria like create a, a case whenever an email is coming to this email ID from a known lead of which lead account or a contact, right? So you can define those criteria and activity type will be email and here I can click on new and set those criteria. Let's say incoming, whenever any incoming mail reach to info at itishrana.com, create an email with normal priority and assign to this queue, correct? So this kind of uh, channel you can use. There's a couple of information here. So you can say allow email from unknown sender. So let's say for any type of random email, even it's a promotion email, do you want to create any case? Yeah, you can do that. Do you want to uh, like create a case only for the valid entitlements? Yes. So this time, this type of things, you can set a criteria. And that's a new thing. You can monitor your activity, how the rule is creating and what type of condition and uh, what's the reason, how, how much frequently the cases are created and all these things. Okay, so that this kind of criteria you can define inside a queue. And here, as I mentioned, once this is set up, you may need to uh, approve this mailbox for this queue, like this incoming email ID. Once the mailbox is set up, 
you send an email to that email ID and it will, after a couple of minutes, you will see uh, a case is created in the system and assigned to the system because it, no one own it or the person own this rule will assign to that case to that rule. OK, so that's another thing. Yeah, I 100% totally forget this one. Yeah, so when it comes to omni channel, any any queue uh, uh, you can make as an omni channel queue, public queue. Uh, you can there is a tab, there is an option called automatic work distribution model. Correct. So omni channel work in an automatic first like work distribution model. So based on that, actually distribute the work depending on the agent capacity and other thing. So when you click on yes, it means this queue is now becomes omni channel queue. So you can use this queue default queue as omni channel queue also. Okay. To, to route the chat, SMS, and other thing. Okay. Um, next is KB articles. Uh, KB articles is also a very, very important topic actually to when it comes to exam because that's also, you will see a bunch of different items related to that. So KB articles basically it more of a, you are creating a certain number of knowledge base articles. Uh, let your step putting a step number uh, steps actually that's a when a customer reach out to you for resetting a password what are the steps to reset a password for dynamic 365 ce right something like that so you can instead of agent use some random information you create a knowledge base uh, is in your like document uh, management system like within that actually a uh, crm or customer service module where you can define your, those knowledge base articles actually like a document and steps you can put an image and all these things there and then basically uh, you can uh, put a channel okay with this article is public or internal so if it's internal only the people belongs to the company like agents can refer this for the customer but they are not allowed to send it to the customer right so this kind of criteria you can set in the knowledge base article and you can also define the search criteria like for what type of keyword they enter this article will pop up correct for let's say delivery thing delivery issue we can put delivery uh, comma delivery issue or something related to delivery couple more keywords so whenever an agent is searching in the knowledge base uh, article tab delivery something like this system will show a list of all the keyword matching articles actually right so this kind of article you can define this couple more thing is there i'm going to show it to you so there is a major very uh, very important topic here is so uh, version control because let's say you are creating a one knowledge base article but it's a company's responsibility to keep update those right so it's like a knowledge base is not one time you create and after some time you retire it's if it's like an important thing you need to keep update those version so let's say for password issue, it's there from years, right? But the now interface has changed, the process has changed from Microsoft. So now the 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 steps actually to reset a password a bit different was there in a couple of years back, right? So that's why you manage those version. It's like a major version change or it's a minor version change, like just a change in minor functionality, just change in very couple of steps, or it's like you are changing. Let's say earlier the article was for 2016 environment. Now it's for uh, D365 CE, correct? With more uh, unified interface. So you have to change those screenshots. That's a major version change, right? So you can control like a version number, version language, and all these things. Yes, you can create an article in multiple languages, and you can publish those uh, in what type of language you want to define as a primary one. Okay, it depends on your organization language also. Next is you can categorize actually a knowledge base article. So you can define a uh, like article if it's like a for deep fact, if it's for uh, let's say question resolution, like those are the category, like very related to subject of a knowledge base, like uh, for case, you can define those criteria. And that's a step I put it. You can go to setting service management, knowledge base management, and then you can see the list of categories uh, to how it looks like. OK, so yeah, you can define those categories and you can actually list those uh, knowledge base article under under that category. OK, so we'll see how it looks like quickly. So knowledge base will be there in the service area and you will see articles here and the search. So you can use the search option or you will see a list of all the articles you have in the knowledge base. Uh, so let's see if I have any one. OK, perfect. So I have a couple of articles here. So let's open one of the article. Let's say booking travel. OK, so that's a keyword I was talking about. You can define those keywords. Let's say book travel. If it's for delivery, you can put delivery or something like that. 
even sometime if you are not putting too many keywords and you put some information different here system yes search uh, uh, keywords from the article actually so let's say you have not put it hotel but you're looking for hotel right so that keyword system will search from that from the knowledge base content uh, that's something it's a free text you can define those uh, using an html or a designer it's very similar designer in in the uh, core functionality in marketing and other so you can use that HTML format or you can preview how it looks like in tab for different other things right uh, when you open this article or when customer open this article okay you can do the formatting put image bunch of different things put a url and all these things here summary here is this for internal no or yes you can define those if it's for internal then you cannot send this to customer right uh, then what's the status right now? It's published or need to update or something like that. Still, uh, it's like a so it's like a still in preview, something like that. So there is a process actually. Uh, I'm highly encouraged to if you don't know, just just re see the process. What's the process of publishing an article? Let's say um, knowledge base writer actually they will basically write an article and they send it submit to the uh, for the approval, correct? So once they submit for the approval, they are one of the manager, knowledge base manager will review those. If it's like no changes required, then they will up publish the article uh, for the uh, like broader number of users to use those. If no, then it basically send back to the writer for the revision. So that's a like back and forth iteration processes there, and it required multiple updates if anything is missing, so and so forth. So you can define which language. Uh, you can define what's a version right now. And what's a minor version? So one is the major version, 1.2 or 1.3 is the minor version, right? So you can define those uh, criteria here. So you also can put a translation. So let's say this translation, let's say this this should be available in English and French. So you can put the translation here. You can put a, a more categorized information here. And what are the separate related articles related to this booking uh, travel issue, right? So you can do those. You can also check actually a couple of other, which this article relates to a product or not, and some of the analytics you can get it from here. How frequently people are viewing this article, like my agents or customers. How, how what, any type of feedback provided by agents, because when agent run this article, they found there is an issue. They basically put a feedback and provide to the knowledge management team to update those articles, right? So you can do a couple of things here. And right now that's author review and publish. Unfortunately, I have not published. I published it directly, not uh, for the steps, but that's the business process flow. You can put an update in the system. Okay. So next is understand the Omni channel and then we'll go to the uh, customer insights and then um, we are good to go, okay? So Omni channel actually, as the name indicates, Omni channel is not for customer service, it's also for marketing. But Omni channel, it's, if I talk about the Omni channel dynamics, it is expected by the Microsoft product. It's it's very specific for customer service right now, correct? It's more of a chatting, the customer, like more of doing a chat chat with the customer, doing the social media functionality and a couple of other things to fix the customer issue. So that's more of customer service related, okay? So there are key, key, key options we have in Omni channel. And also, whenever you are creating a, like you are doing a, ch a chat with a customer, live chat with a customer, it's, it's created uh, it's created a record in the system called conversation. Okay, so conversation is the key, but that's why if you're, if you're able to see in the timeline, I click on the plus button and you'll see a conversation button right, right there. So whenever you are creating a case from a chat, it will basically create a conversation activity. Conversation is an activity type. And basically, when you create a new case from a chat, it will put that chat transcript inside the case, okay? So that's a very important understanding what is conversation, okay? So you can do two-way two live chat, you can do two-way SMS, that's 100% possible. There are two SMS provider uh, in, the, uh, in, in the system. You can use one of those. There is a social media channel like Facebook, WeChat, or WhatsApp, and other, other channel you can use uh, to publish your channel for your customer to contact you. You can obviously integrate with Microsoft team and you can hand off from bot. So what it mean by this? So let's see a scenario. Customer log into your website. It started chat from Power Virtual Agent. Like bot is basically so suggesting customer, okay, do this, do this. No, customer is not happy because not able to fix that issue. He said, connect to an agent. Or once the 
topic is end in the your virtual agent, it will automatically send this uh, send this conversation uh, to from Power Virtual Agent to Omni Channel Live Agent. So it will see. Sometimes you'll see that if you connect to a bot, and once you're not able to the bot and not able to fix your issue, it connects to an agent. So that's a handoff process to a live agent, and then agent actually can do more of understanding the customer issue, try to fix it, not able to create a case from the same window and uh, that's it actually correct and you will see a conversation uh, in the timeline of the case so someone actually open a case they will see what was the conversation happened with the customer what is the issue okay so this type of thing you can measure and, and capture in the system that's a very like a service of workflow management so i was so uh, in a couple of minutes i was showing this to you so let's say customer request you for any type of um, issue, they now choose option to choose a channel. Like they'll call to the call to you using your phone line. They can start a chat uh, using your live chat or start from bot. They can contact like during your, your portal self service portals. They can send an email to you or a couple of other channels. Okay, so let's say SMS and all. So let's say they choose to to a chat. Now it goes to a queue, correct? Because you routed this to a through a queue. It can be an individual queue or an organization queue, individual private queue, public queue. But when you create a chat, it will go to a queue actually, like it will go to 100% only channel related queue. So as I mentioned, you can you have hundreds of queue in the system, but only the checkbox for automation work distribution is checked to yes. Those queue relate to an omni channel queue. That's very important. So you uh, channelize this chat request to a omni channel queue and then there you customers say no it's a billing or complaint it's a complaint issue so it will basically go to a bot uh, like it will first assign to a bot bot try to fix that issue if not then it hand off to an agent actually so bot also consider as an agent in the omni channel it's, it's like more of a pv agent okay more automated agent i'm going to show a quick demo configuration demo of omni channel so installing an Omni channel is a bit different now. You need to go to Power Admin, Power Platform Admin Center now. Go to Resources, go to uh, Dynamics 36 Apps, and here you can either search for Omni channel or you just go down, and you will see something like Omni channel for customer service apps. Okay, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's already installed, but it's not showing non install. I don't know why. So you can click on Manage, and it will something goes to this place, something like this. And you can click on add environment, choose your environment list of the organization, and you can install. You have an option to install only chat, only SMS, or only one of the channel. So you have to choose at least one channel, and you can go through and complete the installation process. It may take some 30 minutes to a couple of hours to complete the installation. Once it once it's installed, it will show you some this kind of window. Okay, it means your channels are installed perfectly. Okay. Same thing, same process for upgrade. Now, once your Chomni channel is installed, also remember that when you create a trial environment, these two app will be there, but you until you are not installing the Omni channel in this uh, Omni Dynamic 365 Admin Center, you are not able to uh, create like a, create a live chat uh, or widget or something like that in the system because your Omni channel is not installed properly. Okay. So make sure that you are installing the Omni channel. Once it's done, what's a way to identify if it's not there for me? So whenever you are going to a chat, uh, go to the admin or, or Omni channel admin app. Whenever you are creating a chat live chat widget, and when you try to save with a couple of information, system will give you business process error. It means your Omni channel is not installed for this environment. Okay, so that's that's how you can identify. So you can put a name here. Obviously, uh, language, what type of agent, uh, name in display, full name, first name, last name, something like that. Okay. What type of uh, chat mode it will be like a live chat or persistent, like more of a you are doing real time or chat will be maintained. Okay. Very, very, it's going like SMS. When you do SMS chat, you are sending an SMS and after one hour you reply, correct? So that's so SMS uh, chat timeline will go for a couple of days, not for hours because. You are sending back and forth like customer and agent sending SMS replying to that. It's it's not very frequently like real time, right? So work distribution that's what I was talking about. Uh, I'm gonna show it to you in a couple of minutes. You can set those fields like just just read those and you will understand what it means by you can allow customer to attach a file from a chat widget 
and you want agent to do the same, allow them to download the transcript and all these uh, uh, criteria you can set. Once you save it, it will give you this code snippet. What you need to do, configure a Power App portal for your environment if you're not, if you don't have any website or if you're using any website and you want to put the chat widget there, copy this code actually and put the chat widget on the home page or wherever you want to put. Same thing for uh, Power Apps Portal. In the Power Apps Portal, you can, there's an option called code, um, code, uh, code snippet, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure I remember the name at this point of time, but yeah, I, I created so many blocks actually on this omni-channel end-to-end functionality, so you can follow one of those uh, for detailed information. And obviously follow the Microsoft Docs actually if required more, but I put it like uh, based on my experience, uh, I put so many blocks actually around it. You can also put an automate messages. These are the new function. So like whenever a customer reach out to you on Sunday, Saturday or not working hours, you can automatically send those messages. Okay, you are contact us. Thank you for contact us, but we are out of office. This is our business hour, right? Or go to, if it's a store, go to our nearest store for this information, right? So this kind of automate message you can display and you can trigger when this will be triggered if customer reach out on specific time, right? These are the very important thing for uh, when it comes to live chat. One is the pre-chat and one is the post-chat conversation survey. These are two called as survey, <clears throat> but basically one is basically to understand what type of customer you are, and second basically to take a feedback. So when it comes to unauthenticated chat, it means uh, customer not logged into any one of the portal or anywhere in the website, they just sent something randomly started chatting with you. But in order to find this uh, contact person who is contacting you or chatting with you uh, in other site, you you are giving them some feel like a, whenever they click on the widget, there is a form will open to enter some information, right? To uh, enter their full name with some formatted, uh, like last name first and then first name, and then or, or different things, you can ask them to enter your email ID, if it's led to a product or a, something else, you can create those survey question from here. And whenever they're creating a, <clears throat> is, is starting a live chat with you, it basically give you, basically ask you this kind of question. Based on the information filled in, it will automatically pick a, a right customer or account from the system and put it there, okay? So this is very easy for agent to identify which is on other line, correct? Which is on, uh, who is talking to me, correct? If customer not, and then you can define if it's a required or not. At this point of time, I make sure that sometime it's required. It's it's not mandatory. Let's say you are allow customer to just start a chat without putting this name, right? So that's something you can do. Post conversation survey. Once the chat is done with the customer, do you want to take a survey like what feedback from the customer? It basically you create a project in the customer voice and put that project here. Project in the sense, yeah, survey template. And basically, when you put it here, it based on the number of question you ask, you can ask a rating or you can ask a drop down different question. It will put a chat survey either in the chat, like in the same widget, or it will just click on the link to redirect and open a new tab in the in the in your uh, uh, browser. Okay, so there is two options you can use. Couple of things here: the conversation option. So first is basically call options. Uh, you can say, no, I don't want to call like my agent. I'm not allowing my agent to do any type of call, like more, no voice call, video call, or they can just do a voice call. So this kind of option, that's why it's called omni-channel. <clears throat> that's a key difference actually, why it's multi-channel, not omni-channel. Like, sorry, why it's omni-channel, not multi-channel. Because at any point of time, you can switch channel from one to another. It means you started a conversation from a bond, but it you transfer to a live chat. From the live chat agent thing, no, I need to call to the customer to get the screen sharing, right? So they can switch a channel from chat to a phone call or a video call. So that's why it's called omni-channel. It's like switching a channel in between a conversation. Um, the next thing you can define actually in the chat widget, more of like a uh, defining the theme color, you can change the logo, change the title and the subtitle. You, when you embed a chat widget, you will see this kind of thing and you can change those color and icon and all these things uh, for your widget. You can also define our operating hours. Let's say when the chat widget will be visible or when it cannot. Like if your agents are not available 
on site. Listen, they don't allow the chat widget will be visible uh, to your a to, to to your website. Okay, or you can just uh, allow them, but some send some automated messages here. Okay, so this you can do. <clears throat> Before I move ahead, I need to go to uh, queues and uh, then we'll go to users and work stream. And then we'll see a time permits. Then I'll come, I'm going to show you quick, quick overview of a custom insights. OK, so that's a default queue I created actually uh, in, in the custom service. And whenever I click on when uh, because I clicked on this queue as a automated work distribution model queue. So that's why showing me as a in here as omni channel queue. And you see you notice actually omni channel queue will like just a three queue. Why? Because the, not every queue in the system is omni channel queue. You just need to set those criteria which which queue will be. What's the priority? So priority here it's it start from one to two zero, correct? One to some uh, one point two million dollar, one point two million something. So if you set the priority for queue is uh, ten, and you can use the number from one. It can be from one to something like uh, two point two million seventy one, something like that. So you can put a priority to let's say thousand, ten thousand here, okay? And you have another queue which pri less priority. So system will go redirect the chat to the higher priority queue first. Always remember, if you put the let's say instead of ten thousand, you put a priority ten to one, correct? So always system will redirect. Try to and like identify the available people in that queue. And put this based on the priority, so that's why it will work based on the priority. It's not just some randomly pick someone, correct? So that's why it's called work distribution. It will distribute the work based on the av availability and the capacity of the users. Okay. Next is basically users. So you can put a number of users in the queue. How many? Like obviously, it's a department-wise queue. You it can be like tens of queue for one department. So in that actually, you basically what you do, you put this user uh, in the system. And there is something called omni channel time. And then you put your capacity of the user. So capacity means if you want one agent at a time can do one chat per customer. Like if I'm the agent, I can do one chat at a time. It means my capacity and the work stream capacity should be same. If you put a capacity of my 100 and work stream capacity is 50, it means I can take two chat at a time. So that's why I just remember. So based on that capacity you define for the user and the work stream capacity in the system, so the agent can take that number of chat. If let's say you put a capacity for a user is 100 and work stream is 10, they can take 10 chat at a time. So it basically just it's something and consider is something like a block, user block. And the smaller number of block you put as a work stream, they will take number of uh, it will take this much of time to consume it, right? If you put 100 and one chat consuming hundreds of your capacity, then it basically uh, show you like 100 is full. Now you, you know it will look for another agent because your capacity is full. You cannot talk to a two customer at one point of time. And obviously that's something you are putting in here. So here uh, we have various work streams for SMS chat and other. And that's why actually in the chat widget, I put a work stream there. This is the one. And you can choose a channel if it's like a SMS live chat and all. That's a capacity. If let's say I want my Asian Ashish Rana can take only one chat at a time, then I'll put the capacity matching of the user's capacity. Okay, that's something you need to make sure. If you want, let's say if you got a question in the exam, what will be the capacity if uh, if a user with 100 capacity can take five chat, then you need to put the work stream capacity will be 20 because 20 into five is 100. So just, just use the basic math and you will be good, okay? If you put, let's say here, uh, work stream capacity is 1000, then what? Now the user's capacity is lower than the work stream capacity. It will not assign any this chat to any of one of the users because user don't have this much capacity, correct? So it will just keep rounding around and that's it actually because the user don't have this much capacity. 100 is not, a, it's more not greater than 1000, right? So basic thing. So that's why you just need to make sure always the work stream capacity will be equal to or less than the user's capacity. Okay. And what like you can do some certain thing like how like if it's the system, let's say customer or a prospect or someone actually on the other side not sending you SMS or not no response, you can send in an automation SMS. Mm -hmm. Are you there still live? And then if no response will get for five minutes, it will automatically close the 
close the chat and free up the agent space to take another chat. OK. Uh, there is a two way work distribution board. This is also very important. It's like if one is the push push notification and uh, sorry, push and second is pull. Push means um, whenever a new chat come in, it will push Lee like it will assign system will automatically assign based on the capacity and queue and other thing to an agent. That means push pushing uh, pushing this chat to an agent. Pull means we are not like if you got tens of chat, then it's agent responsibility to automatically like manually pick a chat from the list of uh, chat sitting in the queue. OK, that's something it's a pull and push. That's a key difference. You can use like a couple of uh, other scenarios like here, put a routing rule here, context variable. That's something you can do it because I created a context variable in the sense I created a pre chat survey question is name. So that's why I created a variable here. You can also actually based on the logic or based on the language or skills, you can route a chat very similar to what we have the skill routing capacity, right? Uh, it's like uh, skill, skill routing. Next is we have a templates. Actually, templates so uh, means what 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 mean by template. So what type of uh, like a field system will display when they are receiving something? OK, just that's what it means. So whenever you are transferring a chat, if you remember in the right hand side here, when you open a this app, the agents app, you will see on the right hand side when a new chat come in, you will see some field like one or two fields with some accept or reject button. That's something it's here. So based on the let's say if, if someone is transferring uh, a chat to another agent, what type of field they can see. So that's basically a te notification templated call and that's that's a comment from the users first name of the users and who is transferring to what like from one agent to another display the agent name. So that's something you can define those template. So template now when it comes to template in the notification template. You can set, set a criteria, put an icon here. Uh, show the short term like if the agent not pick up in 120 second, like two minutes, automatically will look for another agent. Correct. Or do you want agent to wait? Correct. Then only assign the chat to them. Or do you want if the agent's capacity is available, then assign the chat automatically to the agent, right? Always don't assign the chat uh, to an agent if the cap if their status is something different. So there is something. Okay, give me a minute. Let me look for a status here. Yeah, so there is a uh, presence. Yeah, that's something I was looking for. If let's say agent presence is uh, offline or do not disturb or let's say um, away, then do not assign any chat to the agent. OK, so that's offline away away or do not disturb. Then don't assign any chat because they are not available to take a chat uh, at this point of time. If the agent capacity is available, it means the capacity is full. The capacity is 100 percent available. Or if it's busy, it means capacity is partially full or partially available. Then assign a chat to them. So in these two status only, a chat or SMS or any type of channel, uh, any type of conversation assigned to an agent only at these two level. Just make sure uh, busy and available. Apart from any of these status the agent contains, it will not assign a chat or an SMS or any type of conversation request to an agent. That, that's 100 percent sure. Okay. I know I'm not able to cover many thing here uh, and I, I highly apologize. Uh, so let's take a minute and go to the insights and we'll wrap up the session. And obviously you can feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn and a couple other channels uh, if you want to have more queries on, on these topics. Insights uh, you can break down as a when you install a customer insights. So basically it will come you a couple of uh, out of the box dashboards. So you have KPI new cases, customer satisfaction, uh, case resolution, those type of uh, dashboard will be there. And last is the topic. So that's a very important thing. Actually, you can automatically create a basically, let's say if I open a topic and uh, let's say for the COVID actually, you are getting hundreds of requests for not able to deliver the packages on time, right? So let's say we'll open one of the topic and you want to automate that topic to an uh, to a power automate, right? So you can actually do that. Open the topic. There is a power automate button. When you click on that, it will open a topic in this in this power automate and you sorry power virtual agent. I'm sorry. And then you can define those criteria like how the routing and other thing will happen, right? So this thing you can define like what are the entry steps and 
message and a couple other things you can you can do. At this point of time, you can also uh, end the conversation with, if I delete this, end the conversation, transfer to an agent. If this thing happened, then agent, you if a customer is asking for this information, what happened next? Next is the transfer to an agent. This is automatically you are transferring to an agent. Okay, private message to agent. You can send some private message to an agent. So this is something you can do uh, when it comes to uh, handoff process from Power Virtual Agent to a Live Agent. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple of other topics. So I'm, I'm I was highly encouraged to discuss. So one is the your case management case so dashboard customer service dashboard the customer satisfaction dashboard resolution dashboard those are available in the customer service inside so i'll highly encourage you to review those and you can customize those from the settings you can connect your environment and configure those dashboard uh, for for your easy to use this topic is not that big actually uh, but yeah that's 100 percent required to just revisit it yeah at the last, thank you everyone and uh, thank you for joining today and reach, reach out to me for any question and concern.